Hi, hello again. Um, right, we've had a fantastic response uh, to the first few videos that we put up uh, a few days ago. And uh, since then, uh, we've had a couple of emails from various people. Uh, one of the ones that we had was uh, from one of the first year dental students uh, asking for um, uh, for a bit of help with the uh, with the larynx and the membranes and larynx and all that. So this is uh, so this is a bit of a shout out to the uh, to the dental massi. Um, right then, so the larynx. It's a uh, it's a tricky little area. Okay? The, th the, the thing about the larynx is that it's all about orientation. Okay, it's not actually as difficult as you might think, okay? But we'll make a start. Now, if we have a look at here, okay? So this is a sagittal section through the uh, through the head, okay? So what we've got here is our nasal area, we've got the tongue across here, this is the oral cavity, and then sitting across here, we've got the hyoid bone and the trachea across here. So the larynx is this area across here, okay? Sitting between the hyoid and the trachea, okay? And it's got a few uh, functions. The major function, though, the major function is really to protect the airway. Okay, that is the major, major function of the uh, of the uh, larynx. Actually, I should pull this up for a second just to um, to point out that the reason that we need it is because this area here, this is the pharynx, and the pharynx is the common pathway uh, for air and food. So obviously, what we need to do is somehow stop food managing to get its way down the airway and towards the lungs. Okay, so that's the major function of the larynx, and as it happens, it also functions through a variety of uh, membranes uh, within it, it manages to allow us to, um, uh, to produce sound by distorting the flow of air. Okay? So that's the function of the larynx. Now, it's done by the, it's made by um, a series of cartilages and membranes. And there are, uh, an easy way to remember it is that there's three paired cartilages and three unpaired cartilages. Okay? Um, of those, most of them are structural, okay? So five of them are specifically structural, and that means that they're made out of a different type of cartilage. They're made out of hyaline cartilage, which is quite hard, okay? But this one here, the epiglottis, okay? Can you see that? All right. The epiglottis, which we'll come to in a second, is, uh, that's the one that really, really sort of, um, uh, it bends out, down out the way, uh, down here, to protect the airway. So because of that, because it's much more flexible, it's, uh, it's made out of um, uh, elastic cartilage instead. We'll come back to it in a second. Can you see it properly? Yeah. Right. Okay, so, our cartilage is in brief. Okay? If we just orientate you for a second, remembering where we were, this is the hyoid bone. This is the trachea. Okay? This is the thyroid cartilage. And underneath this is a thing called the cricoid cartilage. Now, if we turn this around, so this is actually a posterior view. We've met the epiglottis. And between the thyroid, cricoid, and epiglottis, that's our three unpaired cartilages. Overlying the cricoid cartilage are these two pairs of um, pyramidal-shaped uh, arytenoid cartilages, arytenoid cartilages. And on top of them, there are these uh, little horns that go across here. Okay? These are the um, these are the corniculate cartilages. Okay? Cornu means uh, horn. And above them, this is, um, there's uh, a couple called the cuneiform, which we'll discuss in a bit. Now, something I should really point out while you're on this view is that this model is actually not very accurate. It's not a great model, uh, model to uh, really understand the larynx, but it does give us the broad structure of things. So I'll use it a few times, but I'll keep telling you at various points when things aren't really that great or that accurate. So for starters, we don't really see clearly the cornicular or cuneiform cartilages on this. Okay? So we'll look at them in a little bit more detail. Yeah. And what we have here is, we've got these, with the thyroid cartilage, if we're looking, we're looking from the front, okay, and we have our broad sheets here, okay, these broad laminae of the thyroid cartilage, which extend forward to form this thing here called the laryngeal prominence, and if uh, you just bring the camera across to me for a second, okay, you can, you can feel the laryngeal prominence on yourself, it's much more prominent on men, and the reason it is, is because uh, under the influence of testosterone, it grows forward as we, uh, as we grow up, okay, so this thing is pulled forward, and as a result, I'll we'll come to exactly how this works in a minute, but if I just turn this through a superior view, you can see that behind the laryngeal prominence, can you see it there, mm -hmm. is... Um, is this area here, okay? Now this is called the uh, the vocal ligament, and we'll, we'll, we'll come to it in a second. But the bottom line is, is that this here uh, is one of the things that distorts airflow, and if um, it is pulled forward by growth, then it gives you that uh, it gives you that much more that much more bassy tone, okay? So uh, so myself and Dondo have been uh, singing uh, singing uh, "Stand by Me" by Benny King a lot, and so it looks like that whole do 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 
do do do do boom 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 do 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 sorry <coughs> that is is made possible by the uh, by the extension of the laryngeal prominence forward thank you d <laughs> Right. Okay. So, um, so these, so because of that uh, feature, because it's uh, because it grows forward, it allows um, a different type of turbulence, which Dee will go in through uh, through in more detail later. But that is um, what accounts for the bassier male voice. Okay. So we've dealt with the uh, laryngeal uh, prominence there and the broad lamina of the uh, laryngeal cartilage. Now it extends back to this area here. Okay. Now this is a muscle attachment line called the oblique line. Okay. Which has at, it the, at its top the superior and you can't see it on here, but an inferior um, laryngeal um, thyroid tubercle. Okay. Um, and from here we extend backwards posteriorly to a superior and an inferior horn, okay, or cornu, okay, so, uh, like I said before, cornu means horn, so the superior and inferior horns of the thyroid cartilage, okay? Now, the thyroid cartilage articulates with the, um, with the cricoid cartilage approximately here, and it's a synovial joint. So what that means is that there is actually a little bit of movement, and again, we'll show you how, but it means that the thyroid cartilage can rock on top of the cricoid cartilage. Now, if we see the cricoid cartilage, it's here, okay? It's here and separated by a membrane that we'll come to in a second, and it's got a rounded, thin arch that goes across here, okay? So that's the anterior surface of the cricoid cartilage, okay, which looks very much like the tracheal rings across here, okay? It's not quite the same, but it's quite similar. However, if we follow it back and we come across here, what we have is these is these broad, flat laminae. So compared with the rounded, thin arch, we've got this quite fat, uh, fat area across here, the lamina of the, uh, of the cricoid cartilage. Now the cricoid cartilage, if you imagine that it's got this sort, of, this sort of shape, it actually, I wonder if you can see it clearly, but it's, um, it, the cricoid means signet ring, okay? So it's got this wide bit here and it's got this thin arch across here. So it's kind of meant to be a little bit like those, uh, those bling rings that you see people wearing. So, uh, so, if you ever, uh, so if you ever wondered, all of you have a pimp in you somewhere, okay? Um, now, if we um, if we go back to the um, if we go back to here, okay, we talked about the cricoid, and sitting on top of the cricoid, we have these um, uh, two arytenoids. Okay, now this this is all extremely small in uh, in life. You know, obviously this is a hugely exaggerated model, but it's actually you know when you see these things, it's really really very fine stuff that we're dealing with. And the only thing I really want to point out about the arytenoids is that they're kind of triangular, and they've got a base here, an apex at the top. And we'll come back to this in a moment, but can you see here, medially, medially at the base, there's an extra process, okay? Now, this here is called the vocal process, all right? That's going to be very relevant shortly, okay? So, we've got a vocal process of the arytenoids. And what's not demonstrated on here is on top of here, you've got these little horns, okay? Think, um, you know, think sort of devil horns. And these are of the, uh, these are of the corniculate cartilages, and then... A little bit difficult to uh, see conceptually on here, but we will later. There's a couple extra on top of that called the cuneiform cartilages. Okay. Uh, we've discussed the epiglottis, and uh, so that covers all of our cartilages. Now they're held together by membranes. Okay. And there are some external and some internal membranes. I think we'll do this by using a slide. Okay. So if I just orientate you again, what we have here is the hyoid bone across here. We've got the thyroid cartilage, we've got the, cri uh, the cricoid, okay? We've got the trachea and its, um, and its tracheal rings there. Now we've got three external ligaments and membranes that, uh, that hold the larynx in place. And they've got very obvious names. So here we have the membrane that connects the thyroid cartilage to the hyoid, so this is the thyrohyoid membrane. We've got the, um, sorry, the, the membrane that's, um, that uh, uh, holds these together. We've got one which holds the uh, cricoid and the uh, trachea, okay? So we've got the cricotracheal um, membrane or ligament, okay? Um, one thing I haven't mentioned, actually, which I should have, is that with the thyrohyoid, it comes through as a membrane, and then the two sides, they cross over, and so they thicken up in the middle, and we call this the, uh, the median thyrohyoid ligament, okay? So that's, that's that thickened area. Uh, just across there, all right. And what you can probably see, I'll show you in another diagram in a second, is that the epiglottis is here, and this is trying to show you sort of through the hyoid. But can you see that there's a ligament going from the hyoid to the epiglottis? And if I show you on this diagram, 
if we take away half of the hyoid okay, and we take away certain area, other areas, you can see here there's a hyoepiglottic ligament. And one other one that I'll just point out to you is that, uh, which isn't labeled on here, but just down here, okay, this is where uh, the epiglottis um, uh, joins with the uh, the thyroid cartilage. And given that it's going to be moving all the way through uh, through your life, you know, it's got there's a very very strong ligament there called the uh, thyroepiglottic ligament. Okay, and again, this is going to be a relevant one later when we see what happens when mucosa folds over it. Okay, and there'll be uh, there'll be various spaces created by that, and we'll see them in a short while. Okay, so that, that's our external ones, and by and large, um, by and large, these things are uh, structural. They're holding everything in place. Okay, but we have uh, two internal uh, membranes, and see if you just come over here for a second. Um, we've got two internal membranes, and the first one, okay, is actually very, uh, very palpable on yourself. Okay, this one is between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. Okay, so it's called the cricothyroid membrane.